The third president of our country was Thomas Jefferson from 1801 to 1809. Jefferson was a Virginian. He was born in Virginia. He was a planter, meaning that he owned a plantation or a very large farm. And uh, he was born in on April 13th, 1743. He became a lawyer and he again owned his plantation. And he married Martha Skelton in 1772. Uh, Jefferson was one of our great founding fathers. He served in our first Continental Congress, and he was involved in the second Continental Congress with writing the Declaration of Independence. We call him the father of the Declaration. Uh, he served as an ambassador to France during and after the Revolution, so he was vital and along with, uh, with Ben Franklin in getting the French to support the Americans during the American Revolution. He was the governor of Virginia uh, uh, many different times, and he served as the Secretary of State under George Washington. So he went back and forth to Europe and uh, all over the world, securing America's place in the world. He served as the Vice President to John Adams, and he then was eventually elected as the third president in 1800. His vice president was Aaron Burr, and he died in 1826 on the same day as John Adams, 4th of July, 1826. Now, during Jefferson's presidency, there were all kinds of different problems, uh, but there were a lot of successes as well. He wanted to build a small but very strong government. That's part of his Democratic-Republican leanings. He wants the government to be small, not overreaching. He wanted a country of smart, well-educated farmers versus businessmen that were only caring about money. So Jefferson, he wanted to limit the power and the size of the federal government. At the same time, he wanted to keep our nation strong. So he uh, wanted to limit the power and cut spending, so he repealed the whiskey tax. He got rid of a lot of different positions in the federal government, and he cut the military. And uh, those are, that's a major source of um, spending, is always, always has been and always will be the military. Uh, Jefferson, though, even though he cut the Navy and the Army, he took a really tough stand on piracy. For years, Barbary pirates in the Mediterranean had been attacking and taking over American ships. And uh, so the U.S. had been kind of bribing those pirates, giving them money so that they leave us alone. And But eventually, we got sick of it. In 1801, the ruler of Tripoli, he wanted more money. So the U.S. said, yeah, we'll give you money in the form of cannons and uh, ships that are going to destroy you. So in 1805... Uh, well, between 1801 and 1805, uh, different ships went over there to Tripoli, and they bombarded the city. They sank all these pirate ships, and they took back and strengthened the seas for U.S. shipping. In 1805, the rulers in Tripoli signed treaties with the U.S. saying that they would not allow piracy anymore. So that was a great win for Jefferson. Um he also strengthened the judicial branch. The judicial branch interprets laws, and they have the power of judicial review, meaning that they can look at a law and declare it to be unconstitutional. So during his presidency, there was this issue called Marbury versus Madison. William Marbury was appointed by President John Adams as a federal judge. Adams made the appointment in the last hours of his presidency. So to be approved, he would have to be, um, or Congress would have to approve his appointment. Congress didn't have time to approve the appointment before Adams went away, you know, went and retired. When Jefferson became president, he wanted to prevent the appointment from becoming official. So he told James Madison, his secre secretary of state, not to deliver the appointment to Congress. And so for people that supported Marbury and Adams, all those Federalists, they got really mad about that. They said, James Madison, you have to do your job. Your job is to deliver the appointment to Congress so we can vote on it. Instead, though, Madison said, yeah, right, I'm not doing it. My boss, Jefferson, said don't deliver it. So this issue arose. Do government officials do their jobs or not? Can they have the choice of whether to deliver these, the appointment, for instance, or not? 
And so Marbury asked the Supreme Court to force Madison to deliver the papers. And now remember, Marbury is going to be a, he's going to be a federal judge. He'll be a member of the, the judicial branch. The legislative branch is waiting on this appointment so that they can uh, appoint this guy or approve his appointment. And the executive branch is the one that's holding all this up. So we have a lot of different issues here, checks and balances, separation of powers. And so finally, well, Congress had this law called Writs of Mandamus. Under this law, the courts could order a government worker to carry out their duties, any government worker. But the Supreme Court, they reviewed writs of mandamus, and they said this law is unconstitutional. The courts cannot order government workers to do their jobs. And so um, they struck down that law. And that was the first time that the courts used their power of judicial review. And that's very important to remember. We're going to ask this on a test. <clears throat> and we're going to ask it on your final. You're going to see it all through your career. Uh, Marbury versus Madison. The issue is writs of mandamus. Can the federal courts tell government workers to do their job? And using the power of judicial review, the Supreme Court said, no, they cannot. They struck down that law. They got rid of it. They said the law is unconstitutional. All right. Uh, under Jefferson, our country expanded a lot. Jefferson purchased uh, the w Western Territory, the Louisiana Territory, and it's called the Louisiana Purchase. Even before the American Revolution, Americans had been moving west beyond the Appalachian Mountains. And uh, so Vermont, well, that's an eastern state, but that was a new state added in 1791. Kentucky became a new state in 1791. Tennessee became a new state in 1793, 96. And then uh, settlers kept moving west, west, west into Mississippi Territory and the Northwest Territory. So um, in 1803, a couple different incidences came together. Napoleon Bonaparte in France, he wanted money. He knew that there was really no hope for settling, settling French territories over here in North America. So he sold the Louisiana territory to the U.S. for $15 million, which was a serious bargain. Um, it doubled the size of the, of the United States. And then in 1804 to 1806, Jefferson sent a group of explorers named Lewis and Clark, and they mapped the new territory. That was their goal, to map the territory, to set up some relations with the tribes out west, and to basically make sure that, uh, or to see how the new country could use this new territory. And shortly after, Americans started moving into this area because of rich land, beautiful rich forest, thick forest rather, fresh water, and lots of different animal life. Here's a map. This shows the original uh, 13 states on the East Coast, then the new states between 1791 and uh, 1803, and then the Louisiana Territory. Look at that. It's a huge chunk of land that encompasses much of the Great Plains uh, and into the Rocky Mountains. Between 1804 and 1806, the uh, Louisiana Purchase was explored by Lewis and Clark, mainly this northern part up the Missouri River all the way to the west coast in uh, Oregon and Washington. In this area still today, you can, you can take the Missouri River and explore and see some of the greatest sites of our country all through Yellowstone Park, the Rocky Mountains, Idaho, Washington. It's really awesome up here. And um, the reports of Lewis and Clark led many, many, many thousands of people to travel west into this new land and claim their own land. Now, um, again, our country began arguing with Britain. During the early 1800s, the U.S. tried to remain neutral between France and Britain as they fought during the another, well, Napoleon taking over Europe. Uh, but both uh, both countries continued to take Brit or shoot my kids are so loud here quiet all right both England and France began c continued to take American ships and impress American soldiers impress them doesn't mean they would do a song and dance and the Americans would say wow you guys are awesome 
impress means they would take American uh, sailors and put them into work, put them to work for the French Navy or the British Navy. So uh, to respond to this, Jefferson passed the Embargo Act. Jefferson and Congress, rather, passed the Embargo Act of 1807. Under this law, American merchants could not trade with any foreign nation. And because of that, American merchants lost a ton of money, and this really weakened Jefferson. It was just silly for Congress and Jefferson to think that we could survive as a nation and not trade with foreign nations. Um, so we kind of changed it around a little bit. Jefferson and Congress changed it, and in 1809, they passed the Non-Intercourse Act, which under this law, American merchants could not trade only with Britain or France. And that was to try to punish these two nations for impressing our sailors. And instead, they impressed more sailors. And they said, well, this will show you, America. Um, and also, there, were con there continued to be Native American troubles. So because the British still stayed out west, still stayed in forts, still supported Native American tribes, those tribes still attacked North or attacked Americans, attacked settlers, attacked our army, our military. In 1811, there was the Battle of Tippecanoe, and uh, the American army under command of William Henry Harrison defeated a North American alliance of Native Americans, a Native American alliance. Um, and again, many Americans saw that the British were to blame. So we have, going into our next president, three big problems. The British are seizing American merchant ships at sea. They are impressing American sailors, again, not with a little jig, but with, with work, with slavery, basically. They were enslaving our, our sailors. And finally, uh, they were giving Native Americans weapons to fight us. And they were telling them to attack our frontier settlers. So lots of problems between America and Great Britain leading into the presidency of James Madison.